Hi everyone, my name is Tina Guo and I play the cello and the electric cello and my son Bagel, can you see him? <laughs> Says hello and pizza has left. Um, I am super excited to be here today to chat with you guys uh, for about 30 minutes about basically whatever comes up in my head to go over my studio setup that you see here uh, in my home in Las Vegas to talk about the different gear that I use uh, on my own personal projects, uh, my upcoming album uh, that will be released on Sony Masterworks at some point this year, uh, and then also the soundtracks that I have been working on uh, over the past year doing quarantine and new projects that I'm working on right now. Um, and I'll also be playing a little bit of music for you guys and of course showing you uh, just the, you Know, general gist of the different plugins. Obviously, I'm using a reverb right now, as you can hear. Um, just the different things that you might be curious about that I've heard about. And I want to say thank you so much to KRK, of course, because you guys are watching this on their page. Uh, they're my absolute favorite monitor company, speaker company. As you can see, I have, oh, you can kind of see this one over here is a little blocked, but um, I love the monitors. I use them for all of my projects, of course. Uh, and so thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and also just so you guys know, I cannot see, if you are leaving any live comments or comments, I cannot see them. Uh, so I am just gonna, I mean, maybe they'll psychically transfer to me your questions. So think them really hard and I, and I might answer them. <laughs> but if you have any questions afterwards, uh, you can always write to me on my own social pages. It's at Tina Guo. That's Tina, G-U-O, Guo, like, whoa, Guo. Um, and I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. So before I get started getting into kind of the nitty gritty details about more logistical, you know, gear related stuff, I am going to play uh, a track that actually I don't think has been heard live anywhere yet because it has not been released. Um, it is called The Swan and it's a new version, a new arrangement that I did together with my co-producer Steve Mazzaro, who's an absolutely amazing film music composer who works with Hans Zimmer. Um, and it's mostly, uh, it's very ambient, you know, a lot of synths, uh, which I programmed some of and Steve programmed some of, and the cello I recorded here in this room, which I'll show you guys later. I'm gonna take my phone off the stand to show you. Um, and this is the microphone that I recorded on. It's from SE Electronics, and this is also their, I don't even know what this is called. Uh, I forgot, sorry guys, uh, it, like a sound baffle uh, thingamajig. <laughs> I'm terrible. Uh, and so I have quite a bit of reverb on here just to, you know, give a little bit of ambiance. But anyway, this is what it sounds like. Wish me luck. Uh, and this is The Swan from my upcoming album, uh, 2021. It's called Dies Irae, which is the day of wrath in Latin. Here we go.
so that was The Swan by Camille Sansan, and it is off my new album, DS e -Ray. Um, Okay, so to do this in a, in a way that makes sense, I think first I'm going to talk about uh, perhaps the instruments of the gear that I'm using, um, that I'm actually playing, and then I will move over to you know, the stuff that I use here. And then later, of course, I'm also going to be playing the electric cello. Uh, so this new album does have quite a range um, of styles of music to reflect, you know, my personal love or psychosis, maybe. <laughs> you put it that way too. So I really, of course, I come from a very strict, traditional, conservative, classical background. So I do love classical music. Um, and uh, I love new age music, ambient music. I love like ethnic organic music, um, just like, you know, weird, like really strange stuff. I mean, you'll hear some of it in, in the album as well, but I also love metal, heavy metal, industrial metal specifically. Um, and so I will be playing also a little metal tune, actually the very first music video that I ever released on YouTube 11 years ago called Queen Bee. It was my, uh, you know, heavy metal version of the Flight of the Bumblebee and one of my first uh, forays into attempting, you know, to play metal, being a, a dorky <laughs> classical uh, ch uh, cello player. So I'll be playing that later and I'll talk about what plugins and what stuff I use for the electric cello. But first, um, I would like to introduce you to this gentleman here. This is, uh, his name is Cello Guo, because I'm Tina Guo, and he was made in the year 1880, or completed, sorry, in 1880, because sometimes it can take, you know, a couple years, uh, years to make these instruments. And he was born in Paris, France, in the shop of Gon and Bernadelle, uh, so two, um, two gentlemen who made the cello together. And this bow that I'm currently using is a more modern bow made by Ole Kahnström. Uh, and this is my favorite, you know, part right here. I have kind of an obsession with crystals, with fossils, dinosaurs, prehistoric life, basically anything wild and tribal. Um, but the tip here, it kind of just, you know, the white part, it's actually made out of woolly mammoth uh, tusk. So yeah, so that's fun. Okay, uh, and then as far as the strings, uh, I use Larson MagnaCore strings. Uh, they all, their other lines and other types of strings are also wonderful, so highly recommended. Uh, right now, the reverb that you hear, I'm not sure if you can see it because I think you guys are a little bit far away, but um, I actually use Quantum Leap Spaces from East West and I've been using this reverb, oh my gosh, since, since basically I learned how to record. So when I first started, I had no knowledge of anything, you know, technology related. And I'm, by the way, I'm 35 years old. Um, so I started when I was maybe, I wanna say after college, I went to USC um, from 2004 to 2007 when I dropped out. <laughs> Woo, dropouts! Um, because I was really struggling to make enough money to like, you know, eat and, and pay for my half a dorm room that I lived in. Um, and so I was doing a lot of gigs. I was experimenting with the electric cello playing like almost every night in different clubs in Hollywood, you know, just uh, gigging with other bands and musicians, um, and also playing some classical concerts. For, for the most part at that time, I was still touring um, with orchestras, small orchestras, nothing major. I never, you know, got to anything significant in the traditional classical world, but I was touring for sometimes like a couple months at a time um, with some, you know, wonderful orchestras, uh, but yeah, so I started failing my classes <laughs> and I had to choose. And so that's why I dropped out. I don't know what that has to do at all with this reverb. Sorry guys, I just go off on a tangent. Okay, um, so anyway, I so it was after 2000, probably I would say 2009 or probably 2010. So, a le oh my gosh, a decade, uh, I've been using this reverb and I absolutely love it. There's so many different settings. I'm sure most of you watching this probably, you know, know about spaces. So right now, um, I have it set very, very high. Uh, I have the dry signal turned down a little bit just because you can hear it from my phone that I'm, you know, streaming this on. Um, and uh, I have the wet signal up to, oh my gosh, it's like probably almost like 80%. So let me just turn it off right now so you can hear what it sounds like. I mean, there's still quite a bit of natural reverb in this room because the ceilings are like two, two and a half stories high and I will show you in one second. Um, so this is what it sounds like without it. Uh, let me turn it back on. So, oh, there we go. Wow, I, I say reverb equals talent. It makes 
everything sound better. I'm not, I'm not a very good singer or even mediocre singer at all, um, but I actually recorded a lot of like vocal effects and more like background uh, ambient cinematic type vocals on the new album uh, also, using the same setup, same mic and everything, uh, and lots of reverb. <laughs> okay, so uh, right now I'm, uh, I'm using Berlin Church. This is the sound that you hear. Uh, okay, and what else? Uh, I work in Logic, so I made a session. I input, uh, I put in, you know, the backing track for this one, uh, and then also the backing track for Queen Bee, which is down here. And then I have my electric cello signal set up. I'm running everything through uh, my Apo Universal Audio Apollo, uh, and so I. What did I use? I used the Apogee Duet previous to this, and before that, I had like an eighty dollar M audio. Uh, little guy that was amazing. I mean, I took him on tour around the world, you know, in my backpack and it was, I mean, I was my workhorse for eight years. Uh, so for anyone who's like just starting out um, or, you know, not able or not wanting to spend a huge amount of money, because um, who can nowadays, but a, a huge amount of money on equipment, but you want to learn how to record yourself and have a home studio set up, it does not require, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, the most expensive thing you probably already have, I might be making wild assumptions here, but um, the computer is the main thing. So if you have a computer, I started recording on my laptop. Um, I had a, a, a used, oh my, I mean, this was so many years, it was like a decade ago, like a used to MacBook of some kind, not a pro, but um, anyway, I had that that I got on Craigslist and Mac, you know, computers come with GarageBand. So that's how I started recording. And when I started, I had no idea, you know, what an interface was. I didn't have any money at all to buy, you know, a microphone. And so, you know what I did? I actually recorded, I mean, it sounded not great. <laughs> I kind of wish I kept uh, some of these recordings just for fun, uh, but I used the little, you know, the microphone built into the laptop and that's how I started. Um, and I remember, uh, you know, this was about 10 years ago and I wrote a song and I had just met and started working with my, my dear friend, mentor, amazing, um, you know, amazing film composer, Hans Zimmer. And so I just started working with them and I was really excited because I was learning how to record myself using my laptop microphone. And like, I, did I have, yeah, I, I think I just used um, little, you know, headphones that I have for that. And so I showed it to him and his first question was like, how did you record this? <laughs> but you know, you gotta start somewhere. So slowly from then on, I slowly built my, um, you know, my studio, my home studio setup, and it's still not super complex. Um, actually for many years, I only had headphones. I started off with the Sennheiser HD 650s because I liked the fact that they had the open ear and I felt that they were comfortable to wear for long periods of time, um, especially if I was doing sessions for hours and hours. I mean, sometimes I'll be doing sessions, you know, from my home studio for eight, nine hours a day. Um, and so they were very comfortable and I actually did not have any monitors. So I always question a little bit or a lot of it, my mixes. Um, I, I tried to listen to stuff on like my, you know, my earbuds, those headphones. Um, but now when I record and when I listen back, I use the KRK uh, KNS 8400s. I don't know if you can see them here, but these are wonderful, very comfortable, very little uh, noise bleed, which is a huge thing because uh, this mic is pretty sensitive. And also when you play the cello and you're playing really, really soft, like, and you want to really capture like a you know special moment like that. Oh my gosh, it's already 15 minutes. I'm talking way too much, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna, we have 30 minutes, so I'm gonna make this shorter. Okay, um, anyway, so because you wanna capture like the really fine detail, finessed um, stuff, it, it, is not good if you have bleed from the uh, from the headphones. So these are amazing, and I've been using KRK monitors for years. I bought my first pair on Amazon. I think there was like a sale, and I was like, oh my gosh, I think I can afford monitors finally. Um, and then these new ones are are a bit bigger, but even like the smaller uh, monitors are amazing. So highly recommended. Uh, and then my microphone that I'm using here, which I don't think I mentioned, I said it was an SE Electronics microphone. I have like five or six other microphones from them, um, but the one that I use my uh, predominantly is the um, uh, RNT. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry, you guys. I need more coffee. Um, is the RNT? It's a tube microphone, and it's uh, it was in collaboration with Rupert Neve. 
amazing quality, whether you are recording cello or what, um, recording erhu, it's a Chinese instrument that I also play. I've recorded like native flutes on this. I've recorded ah, vocals on it. <laughs> um, so yes, okay. Uh, I feel like I should probably move over to Mr. Electric Cello over here, but before I do that, I'm going to take my phone off the stand that it's on right now very carefully, hopefully not destroying this live stream completely, just to show you the room that I'm currently working in. So when I first started, I started in, um, actually I was living in a studio apartment, so the only room there was and the ceilings were very low uh, and there was carpet. There's actually carpet here as well. And I actually like carpet because it helps dampen the sound. Um, but now that I'm in this house in Vegas and the ceilings are very tall, sometimes you do have some natural reverb that you don't want. So I would recommend for anyone that's playing the cello or, or you know, other instruments too. Uh, usually when I record, as you can see right now, this distance, it's about, I would say like a foot and a half. Um, or maybe like two feet. I would recommend not to go any further than this. Um, I This is a personal thing, but I really uh, personally like close making the sound. And, and also if you're recording um, some aggressive chugging, you know, and to really get that uh, like gritty sound, especially if you're, uh, if you're mixing maybe a one live musician with a bunch of samples and there's some amazing samples nowadays but thankfully they still can't uh, replace the live musician so if you um, are maybe overdubbing someone I personally would recommend having them really close mic so you can hear the grit because that's what makes it sound human because it is human so I would record it actually very close Here, I'm gonna move this a little bit uh, I don't, I don't, I'm just gonna play something random it's going to be really hard to capture if you are too far away um and i've you know i've been to studios and i've ha recorded in situations which you know are far beyond my understanding and capability of doing myself with all kinds of different mics all over the place but i gotta tell you uh, at the end of the day i've recorded on a lot of like you know a lot of hopefully you know professional good projects uh, with this single mono you know single mic setup um, so recently uh, in here in this room during quarantine uh, I recorded about a hundred hours <laughs> for Top Gun for the movie that hasn't come out yet um, Wonder Woman 84 the new one um, uh, I'm currently working on Boss Baby 2 and then also Tomorrow War uh, by Lauren Balf, who used to work with Hans. Um, I recorded Hillbilly Elegy on the acoustic cello, which is a soundtrack by Dave Fleming and Hans Zimmer. And also Boss Baby 2 is uh, Hans Zimmer and Steve Mazzaro. And Steve is my co-producer on my album. So it's one happy, you know, remote control family. Um, and then a, a lot of other, I'm sure I'm forgetting way too many people and I apologize, uh, some albums or whatnot. Um, Bear McCreary, I'm excited to be working on a non-soundtrack related special secret project um, this Sunday. And I'm not, to I'm totally not like trying to name drop, just to name drop, but I'm just saying, um, because I have met some people who are like, you can't just record in a non-sound treated room with one microphone, that's not professional. I mean, I guess it depends on what your opinion of professional is, but um, I this is how I recorded my album, you know, um, on this mic and then all these projects. So please, you guys, for again, for anyone who, because I know a lot of musicians right now prior to the pandemic did not have a home recording setup. Um, and it can be really overwhelming because it's a lot of stuff and it's also very expensive to buy a lot of stuff. So do not feel like you have to wait until you can like, I don't know, have some like multi crazy surround sound uh, set up and, and this and that, like don't listen to that. Don't listen to people who say stuff like that. They're just trying to make up for their own issues, but um, it is totally possible 100% if you have a good microphone, if you have, you know, in the end, it's how you play or how you sing or how you whatever. So you have your own skills, you practice, you have a microphone, you have some kind of computer, you have, you know, uh, interface whether it's very basic or uh, a more advanced one um, you can you have your monitors you know so you can you can check to see what you sound like or your mix if you're mixing at home you have some headphones and it really is not um, impossible to achieve okay let me hurry up because I feel like I'm taking way too long all right <laughs> okay um, so first 
going back to the fact that I am in a room uh, that is, hold on, let me take this off without breaking. I actually broke my ring light last night, like the, uh, the stand. So it's like basically almost falling off the stand uh, when I was doing my little check last night. Okay, hi, that's my face, really, really too close up. All right, so do you see this behind me? This is a clear sonic sorber uh, baffle panel things that I have had for many, many years, I think eight years. And so what I do, I have two of these. I have one here and the one is behind, is folded right there. So what I do is I make like a little small around this, oh my gosh, hold on, around this area, if I'm recording acoustic cello, um, and I do, because if you look up, like, yay, Wonder Woman, okay. So it's pretty, it's a very tall ceiling. So there's a lot of natural reverb, which I'm sure you can probably hear right now. So I'll take this and then I'll put it around this little area to make like a small cubby. Um, and I've been using that method also in my previous place when I was in LA, um, I, I lived in a condo and the room was actually very, very small. It was like a two bedroom condo and it's a pretty small room, but I still put those up sometimes and also, you know, in front of the windows or whatnot. So I highly recommend something like that. But if you're, you know, with budget restrictions, and whatnot you can definitely uh what have i used in the past oh my gosh coats um mattresses blankets all kinds of all kinds of stuff okay now i'm gonna play for you a li little bit of electric cello and then i'll talk to you about how i record the electric cello and i also wanted to um give some tips on composers or producers who are working with remote musicians, uh, classical musicians, and just on tips on how to make the process more smooth. So let me go ahead and do that. My computer has fallen asleep. Wake up. Uh, okay, so I'm going to mute this. I'm gonna mute this channel. I'm gonna turn this on. Okay, so uh, for my cables, look at this beauty. I. <laughs> I love the wooden N, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a very pretty white metallic color. Um, analysis, analysis Plus cables, amazing, amazing. I use these uh, live on stage. These kind of thinner ones I use in the studio. Let me plug it into a channel. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. And then I'm gonna move this baby. Okay, so what I have my Yamaha electric cello plugged into uh, and running through is, uh, I, so I use the Line 6 Helix. Okay, wait, hold on. Can you see me? It's a little awkward, maybe. Um, so Line 6 Helix, so I, it's a pedal, digital pedal board that I, oh my gosh, <laughs> that I use live. Um, and I also have the plugin. So what I have here, which you cannot see because it's microscopic, I have one, two, three, I have six settings that I like to use. So I save those um, and they're based off of the, the, I mean, it comes with so many presets that are absolutely amazing. Every single one sounds fantastic. Uh, whether you're playing guitar, uh, bass, electric cello, electric violin, whatnot. So this is the Brit Plexi Jump and I you know, adjusted the EQ levels and stuff a little bit. Okay, so we have this one. I really like the uh, Line 6 Doom with some echo. And then another one of my favorites is the German Uber Sonic. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to play a little bit of electric cello for you guys. This is Queen Bee, um, my very first music video that I released a decade ago, uh, and it's also on my album called The Journey, which is my second um, ever album released in like, I think 2010 or 11. Oh my gosh, wish me luck. <sighs> Here we go. One, two,
classic doom sound. four times this morning and it did not happen so yay okay <laughs> all right guys so oh by the way pink hair on this I call it unicorn hair um so I have a line of acoustic cellos uh pickups for acoustic cellos uh bows for violins violas and cellos that come in both carbon fiber we have different kinds of carbon fiber uh and um and wood and the hair we have options in car in synth Sorry guys, that completely fried my brain. Um, synthetic hair and horse hair. And the horse hair comes in a bunch of different color varieties. So if you guys are curious about, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's a pink bow. Um, you can get a bow with any combination of colors customized at tinaguostrings.com. Again, that's T-I-N-A-G-U-O strings.com. Completely shameless plug. Okay, so I talked to you guys a little bit about what I use. And also when I work with clients, uh, on their projects, if I'm recording, you know, electric cello, what I usually do is I will go ahead and process uh, to my own taste something, actually sounds that are completely customized for each project. So I actually, I mean, I have my presets that I like to use, but I'll adjust them a little bit to kind of match, um, you know, whatever project I'm working on. And so I will, oh, sorry guys. <laughs> so I will do that. Um, and also provide the dry signal because I think it's always good if people want to, oh, I feel like it's kind of awkward position. Let me just stand. Okay. Uh, or, I'm just going to kneel. I'm going to kneel. Okay. Um, uh, you know, so they can uh, play around with the sound. Some people like to reamp it. Some people have their own plugins. Uh, if they're mixing it in with like a band and the other instruments, sometimes they want to run it through the same type of, obviously the same type of sounds or whatnot. Um, so what, oh, I also wanted to mention because I'm already uh, run over my time limit. I'm so sorry. I, why am I, you guys, why am I on my knees? This is like so weird, but this is what happens when you're live and uh, you're just doing it naturally. Okay, so I'm on my knees. I bow down to you. Thank you, KRK, for having me. And to complete this uh, very strange and random, uh, but wonderful and fun live stream, uh, just a few tips if you're working with a remote musician, uh, if you're working with a classical musician uh, from you know that kind of background, for the most part, m my clients that I've worked with, maybe 80% do provide sheet music, they do read music, but if you don't read music, it's totally fine. So what you can do is I ask that um, everyone send, uh, for the deliverables, send the MIDI. And for some reason, some people are like very secretive about their MIDI or like what how, what they're programming for each individual track. So you can just send just the track of whatever, you know, maybe if you, for example, if you wanted me to record cello on your piece, you would record, uh, you would send them synth cello part, perhaps using my sample library. <laughs> Another plug, oh my gosh, I'm terrible. Um, a teeny little sample library because that, that actually happens a lot. So they'll send me that. Uh, they'll send me the, the bounced audio so I can just, you know, hear it. Uh, but the MIDI is most useful because if you don't read music or you don't have the time to make sheet music, uh, try if you can to like quantize it a little bit because sometimes I've gotten 
parts that are, I mean, it takes forever just to try to figure out what on earth I'm supposed to play. Um, but try to quantize it a bit if you can. Uh, and then you can just export the MIDI and make sure you include the tempo information. If there's like, you know, t uh, time signature changes, the the you know BPM, whatever, everything. Uh, so have that attached and that saves a lot of wasted time because then whoever gets the file, you just double click it, it opens in Logic or Pro Tools or you know Cubase or whatever you're using um, or GarageBand. <laughs> Let's not forget GarageBand. Um, and yeah, that is really important. And then for me, I just ask for stems. Now, if it's a really, because there's some projects I work on where there's maybe like a hundred tracks or more. Um, so if, it's, if that's the case, maybe Maybe just break it out into you know band um for me drums percussion guitar bass and then if you have other instruments you could do like woodwinds um brass <laughs> uh you know general strings vocals separate the solo vocals from the from the uh, background vocals um so just to make sure you have yes yeah, so the stems the sheet music if you have it if you don't um hope that they can export, you know, uh, some kind of basic music from the MIDI, uh, because if you are paying someone by the hour and they're trying to figure out by ear, you're gonna end up paying a lot more. Um, and then also as far as live listening, so for the most part, when I do remote recording sessions from here, I don't offer live viewing because I feel like it just, I don't know, it just like takes um, me out of the zone, but occasionally on occasion, there's certain things where like, maybe I'm co-writing something with someone or it's super complex and like confusing. Uh, and then it's better to have a live viewing situation. So what I usually do is I do a zoom meeting for the, for the video so you can see them. Um, and then to listen to the audio directly from your DAW. So whatever you're using, um, if you guys don't know about it, check out audio movers. Uh, it's audio. I think it's audiomovers.com. Uh, but you can just check it out and they have this plugin called uh, Listen To. It's free for whoever's listening because what it does is that it sends, so I would just put it into this out uh, channel right here. Uh, it's a very, very cost. I forgot how much it was, but it's like super not expensive. Um, and it sends in almost real time. It's just a tiny, tiny bit of delay, but it's like amazing quality in complete, you know, quality directly from what you're actually recording. So what you're hearing, they get to hear as well. And all they have to do is open a website link. Um, and so you can check out Audio Movers if you are doing live, because when you do live um, listening, sure you can see it, but sometimes the audio is so terrible that it's kind of still hard to tell what's going on. So I definitely recommend doing that. Um, again, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, and, <laughs> and, uh, if you have any questions, please check me out on my uh, social media pages. It's at Tina Guo on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. My website is tinaguo.com. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment or leave a comment here uh, and I'll get back to you guys. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Hope you um, found this a little bit useful or entertaining uh, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks, KRK.